Hey everybody, happy new year. I thought this filter was perfect for both new years and higher. This is my first live on my higher coaching page. So thank you anybody who watches this. I've got 10 things for you guys that I think are just nuggets if you want to change your body, change your mindset around being healthy. Because what I've noticed is a lot of people have this mentality that being healthy sucks and being unhealthy is like better and more enjoyable. And that's so sad. Ooh, filter getting crazy. What's up, Emily? Good to see you. I got some of my clients on here, which makes me happy. And because this is on the higher coaching page, my hair is so messed up. I just got done working out. Because this is on the higher coaching page, we're going to do this call just like I do with my higher clients. And we always have pen and paper. So if you're watching this, even on the replay or live, go grab something to write with and jot some things down because there is a huge difference between passively listening and like actively identifying things that you want to work out. Hey, Kim, thanks for joining me. We got Wendy here over in the UK. What's up, girl? Okay, so I've got 10 things for you, 10 nuggets that really help on this journey of not only physical transformation, but how you relate to yourself, how you take care of yourself, how you look at self-care and being healthy, right? And these are all learned through my own personal journey, and they're a big part of what I share and teach and hire. So some of them, some of you may have heard before, but we're going to go through the 10 things. So the first thing, the very first thing is having a self-supportive mindset versus a self-pressuring mindset. Most people have used pressure, being hard on yourself. I'm going to beat myself into change. You freak, freaking loser. Come on. Don't be a, don't be a wimp. Let's go. Like it's, I call it, um, bad high school football coach syndrome. <laughs> Anybody ever heard me call it that? You guys know what you're, no, I'm talking about, right? You got that one coach that's like, what are you freaking doing? Are you asleep? Get out there. Do you want to lose? Right? That. a lot of people use that to motivate themselves and they're scared to let it go because they think it, I've, this is the only motivator I've ever used. So if I stop using this, I'm just going to become this loser that never achieves. And I'm telling you, you will get there so much faster if you switch into a self supportive mindset. And I'm grateful for marathon running because a lot of this mindset came from that. Because when you're out there on the freaking course and you're like, dude, I, I don't know, man. I don't know if I can freaking finish this thing. Like I can barely see straight right now. I can barely put one foot in front of the other. You literally have to get in a self-supportive mindset. You, it's, it's, it's necessity at that point. It's like, come on, let's go. Come on, come on. I just did the hardest workout ever. <laughs> it was so hard. And I like, I was scared to start my next set, you know? And I was like, come on, you got this, you got this. And that is like how I talk to myself all the time. It's like, come on, you got it. Come on, you got it. When things get scary in business or uncomfortable with like personal growth, it's like, you got it. Just stay here. You're doing great. Let's go. So get into that kind of self-talk. That's number one. Hey, Sam, thank you for joining um, from the UK. Um, all right. Number two. So first is self-supportive, not self-pressuring. Number two, be your own mom. i probably, if any of you have followed me for a while, you've heard me say this. This was something that I used personally to help myself start eating in a self loving way. Right? So a lot of like what's out there and like this kind of like, I call it immature self love. It's like, I love myself. I'm having ice cream and there's nothing wrong with having ice cream sometimes, but that if like, you're trying to change your body and you slip into this, like, I'm just, it's me time. I'm gonna do whatever I want. Like, but it's not matching what you really want. That's not self love. It's kind of like the parents who give their kids treats and toys and all those things to like get their kid to like them like that. It's, it's, it's an immature self love. True motherly. I'm a mom. I got four kids. True love is I want what's best for you. Right. And sometimes that's easy and sometimes that's kind of difficult. So be your own mom with food. And one of the things I say a lot, you probably heard me say is eat your real food first, right? You can have that. You can have, you guys can have all that stuff. It's fine. Cause I don't like restrictive mindsets, but let's get some nutrients in first. So we're not filling up on chips and cookies, you know, like you can have the chips and cookies after you eat your real food. So be your own mom and think what is actually self loving for me. My body has all these needs. Let me give it that first. And I don't need to be like, I don't personally don't like these like no sugar January. I'm not going to eat any sugar for all of 2022. It's like, it doesn't need to be like that. 
<laughs> just because that, 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 that identification with it will make you get crazy. Like all of a sudden, all your subconscious is hearing is like sugar, sugar, sugar. And your little rebel inner child is going to be like, I freaking want it. <laughs> when you can focus on things that bring nutrients in that you enjoy eating, which we'll talk about in a second, that stuff just falls away easily. So make choices for yourself that are actually self-loving. Be your own mom. Eat your real food first. Okay. Number three, this is a big one. And this is why I hope you have something to write with because I want you to write right now if you do. You're going to have to change what your perception of normal is. This is why transformation is so difficult. We have to get into some deep subconscious awareness here. And this is why I wrote my level up program is to help you dive into your subconscious. There's like written parts in it. You got to like bring it out. If you're like a podcast book junkie and all you ever do is listen and you don't actively ever identify what's going on, what your belief systems are, you're not going to get there. You have to actively identify what's going on with you. And so what I want you to identify right now, if you're writing is what things in your life do you perceive as normal? This is what normal people do. That's holding you back from getting where you want to go. For some people that's, well, it's totally normal on Friday night to like watch movies and eat a bunch of junk food. Guess what? That's not normal for me. I don't do that. Um, and that I used to, I used to almost every night watch Netflix, TV, eat snacks. That's not a part of my life anymore. I don't perceive that as normal. I don't ever want to go back to that life personally. So my perception of normal had to change. Um, maybe normal to you is just, I, 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 I do this really hard all in Monday through Thursday. I just go so freaking hard and I starve myself. And then on the weekends, I just freaking let it all go. And it's just a freaking disaster. If that's normal to you, you're going to need to change that. And that to me goes back to the be your own mom thing. Cause you've got some weird subconscious belief that being healthy needs to be hard and horrible and restrictive and you just can't bear it anymore. And your little rebel child, the rebel inner child comes out and just wants to play and be free on the weekend. You got to look, take a look at that. So what is normal about your life right now? That's holding you back from the life that you want to be living. Okay. Number four is why, right? And you hear this all the time. Simon Sinek has his book. It starts with why. And I've got some things to say about the why. It is important, but it's going to shift over time. So in order to go, let's say you're normal as you pick up fast food all the time, like in a busy week, you kind of, you know, you really hit and miss with the gym. Um, you know, you, sometimes you care about being healthy. Sometimes you don't care. Like, and that's your normal. In order to shift into a new normal, your why is going to have to be powerful, so this is like every new client I get, I ask them, I'm like, why did you hire me? And when they say something like, I just want to feel better. I'm like, that's not going to do it. <laughs> it's, it cannot be this week. Like, I don't know. I just felt like I should lose a few pounds or whatever, because guess what? On February 17th, or whatever, some random Thursday where stress is mounting and you just don't care anymore. If that why isn't powerful, like I just want to feel better is going to go out the window. You, that's not a strong enough why. You need to have a juicy dangling carrot, like a steak, you know, in the cartoons where the dog's like, oh, I just want that steak so bad. Your why needs to be that juicy steak. So what I find helps with this is to visualize that. That's kind of cool. <laughs> visualize <laughs> that kind of future get a moment in your mind so for like one of my clients for example right now it's real her her vacations with her family are very a, a very powerful motivator for her it matters to her a lot and she's got this vision of her on this paddle board in her like healthy body and she can do whatever she wants and she she locks into that vision right? So they're visualizing and, and it, it freaking matters to you. That helps on that random Thursday when you're like, I don't care anymore. You're like, yes, I freaking do. Right? We even do vision boards. I have a vision board. Get that visual picture in your mind, right? What is it for you? That's why you see so many single people at the gym <laughs> because part of their why is they want to attract a mate. It's powerful for them. Okay. So there needs to be some sort of like um, belief that this is just a means to another end, right? Getting fit is not really like 
the the goal per se when people have a very powerful transformation getting fit i don't know why i'm losing connection but um okay so what is your juicy steak be real with yourself i can't believe i'm losing connection i'm on wi-fi at my house but sorry guys so i don't care what it is as long as it's freaking powerful now i had a very powerful why in the beginning but that has shifted and that takes me into our next one number five which is habits it's just a habit for me now. I mean, I do have some whys where it's like, I like how I feel. I hate how I, because I exercise pretty much every day. I hate how I feel when I go a long period of time without exercising. I feel like freaking depressed. My dopamine goes down. I don't get that adrenaline boost. It's just like, I just feel like this like, like lower level version of myself. So that's kind of my why now, but it's also just a habit. I just have my flow. Um, let me see if I have this on this one. Yeah, flexible flow, okay? Flex up, think flexible flow. What do I mean by that? For me, my flexible flow is sometimes, like today, because <laughs> it's New Year's and I stayed up really late last night, a lot later than usual, I didn't work out at the same time. But my pattern is still wake up, meditate, morning routine, gym, whatever else, okay? <laughs> work, whatever. So be up if you can create in your life like enough space to be able to have that flexible pattern, do it. If you have to be to work at freaking 8 a.m., you're going to have to be a little bit more like Nazi religious about your nighttime routine. So you make sure you can get enough sleep to be able to keep that. But having that flow, once it's on autopilot, it, it's weird for me now. It would be so weird to not work out in the morning. It would feel like not brushing my teeth or taking a shower. It's just what I do. It's on autopilot. So to get to that place, your why needs to be powerful. But after a while, it just becomes results on autopilot. Your results are built into your daily flow. It's just like I do all these things. That's why I have a morning routine because I get those results in my life expansion because of the daily habits that I have put in place. So this is so important. If you're sporadic and you're just like, I'll work out at some point today. No, no. I'll meditate sometime today. No, all you're doing is creating a tremendous sense of stress with this like to-do list thing and you're feeling like a failure because you're never getting to it. Take it by the freaking horns, create your life, create that flow. And that is where we get to, oh, hold on. I'm going to jump ahead. Commitments. Okay. So I'm going to switch this to uh, the next one. Commitments, commitments. Okay. So, um, Ed Milet. I call him my uh, personal development spirit animal. Freaking love that dude. If you've never geeked out on Ed's stuff on YouTube, I highly recommend. But Ed says something that I really like. And he says, self, self-esteem is built when you keep your word to yourself. So there's a, there's a bit of a personal development journey here that comes where you got to start keeping your word to yourself. I am, it makes me sick, honestly, when I hear people say, I'm really good at like keeping my word to other people. But when it comes to me, no, you know why you're good at keeping your word to other people is to not be embarrassed to save face. And if you can switch this into, I like keeping my word to myself matters more than anybody else. Your whole internal environment will start to change and your self-confidence will just bloom because you're like, dude, I know when I freaking say I'm going to do something that I'm going to freaking do it. And that is, that is, that's part of the growth. So create your flow of how you want your life to go. And when you feel yourself sinking into these old patterns of, I don't feel like it, mm -mm." recommit, baby, recommit. It's like, no, no, no. (laughs) That's kind of like being your own mom. And I do this all the time, all the time. I'm like, you're seeking in those old patterns again. You're distracting yourself on social. Get, nope, nope, nope. We're not doing that. Right, so there's a little bit of discipline that needs to come in there in the name of self-love. Okay, so um, let's see, recommitment. I just want to highlight that on, on when we're talking about commitment. The only difference from when I used to be overweight to where I'm at now is I just kept recommitting and stopped throwing in the towel when I felt like I wasn't like killing it anymore. It's like, oh, just jump back in, just jump back in, just keep going, just keep going. So recommit. You are going to go into old patterns. Life is going to happen. 
and you're gonna eat a whole bunch of crappy shit. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna try not to swear on this one because I know some people get offended, but oh well, I swear all the time. <laughs> but you're gonna eat crap, you're gonna sleep in, you're gonna get off, and as soon as you realize it, and as soon as you're ready, you just recommit and jump in again and again and again and again as many times as it freaking takes, okay? Um, okay, the other part about commitment I wanna talk about is show up. So with your gym flow, when I say I work out every day, I mean, yes, I go to the gym seven days a week. Do I crush it every day? No, I don't. But you know why I do it seven days a week? Because I don't want to disrupt my flow. I've got a flow and it's when you disrupt it, it it's harder to get started again. So sometimes all I do is walk. I just like catch up on all my stuff on my phone and I just walk uphill on the treadmill for an hour. But I show up every day. So my energy levels are different. I base a lot of it off of that. Some days I'm like, dude, I need a recovery day. So I'm just gonna walk today. Or, you know, some days I'm like, let's go, baby, let's go. I got so much energy and I freaking crush it that day. But sh commit to showing up. I'm not saying you have to do seven days a week. I find it easier to do that way, right? I'll be like, oh, it's Thursday. I don't do this flow today. And then tomorrow I have to do that flow. I find that stressful to like get out of my routine and like jump back. I would rather just have the same routine. Um, but whatever it is for you, like commit to just showing up no matter. Now, let me put a little teeny thing. If you have like hypothyroidism or like something your body's really healing from and you just really need extra sleep, I would do that. But be careful with that because it can be like a slippery slope. Even if you have hypothyroidism, it's still good for you to walk, right? But definitely don't push yourself into the ground. But yeah, like having this commitment of I'm going to show up, even if that's just free stretching and yoga today, I'm going to show up and it really relieves stress over time. Um, okay. I wanted to hit on fun. Okay. Next one. Fun. So build as many wins into the experiences that you want to integrate into your daily life as possible. And this is what I mean by that. When I go to the gym. There's several wins there for me. One is I like my gym. I like the environment in there. I like the way it feels in there. I have tried working out at home. I freaking hate working out at home. <laughs> so if that was all I was going to do, I would have to find some sort of solution like in the winter, like snowshoeing or like something. Cause I'm like, I, it's just, it sucks the life out of me. So that's me personally. Some people love it. Some people hate going to the gym. So if you hate going to the gym, like get yourself a home gym or something, right? Um, another win for me is I use pre-workout. So I'm kind of high on caffeine. That's a win for me. Um, I love music. So I have this one playlist where all my freaking fun, like all the beats that make me want to dance, that playlist, I only listen to it when I'm at the gym. And I'm constantly looking for new ones. And it's kind of this fun little thing. It's like, oh, I love this song. Let's go. Okay. Um, I have switched gyms many times because I'm like, I'm not digging this vibe and something about this is like making me not want to go here. Time to switch. <laughs> okay, so make sure there are wins built, positive things associated with that experience. Some people get deterred because they crush themselves into the freaking ground every time they start on a fitness journey. And then they have this negative, they're like, I hate being in there. I don't like my workout clothes, they're uncomfortable. I, I, I just feel like crap in there. And every time I'm done, I'm just so sore. Like, change it, ease yourself into it, create wins. Like, what do I like about being there? If you're a workout partner person, get that in play. I not, I don't, mm -mm. <laughs> If I had a workout partner, I'd be like, oh my God, I don't feel like going. <laughs> So make sure whatever these barriers are for you that make it not a fun, happy, positive experience, switch it. And that same thing goes for food. If you hate your healthy food, guess how long you're going to stick with that? <laughs> no one is going to stick with anything where they hate everything they're eating. So one, figure out healthy things that you like eating. Okay. You don't, there's lots of ways to skin a cat. You don't have to do keto. You don't have to do all sorts of approaches. I'm not ever going to do carnivore because I don't need to do carnivore, first of all. And I don't love, I, I just like that. I would be miserable for me personally. Now, if I had autoimmunity or gut issues that were really severe, I'd freaking push through it. But I don't need to. And I don't like just eating meat. So I'm not ever going to do that. I don't, uh, uh But, you know, maybe you're somebody who's, I don't know, like you hate fatty foods and you're doing keto and you just like hate every second of it. Don't switch. 
You don't have to do that. You can achieve similar benefits through high intensity interval training, um, healthy fibrous carbs, et cetera, et cetera, you know, going in, um, intermittent fasting, things like that. Okay. So make sure you like what you're eating. Find things that taste good to you. Find, you know, a Greek yogurt bowl with, you know, fruit on it and that you guys know that apple one I make it's so freaking good right so find things that you look forward to eating that get you what you want be creative like do go for it like look <laughs> take care of yourself you know okay you don't have to eat just like plain broccoli <laughs> you got to learn how to make your healthy tuss, healthy stuff taste good so you want to keep eating it and then you don't think about all the other stuff because you're looking forward to this stuff that's getting you the results you want that tastes good okay moving on um <laughs> All right, next one. Play pretend. I love this one. Okay, so I'm gonna share a little quick story. When I was doing my bikini competition, I hit this point of hunger. I mean, I got to 10% body fat, guys. So I was like, you're hungry. Your ghrelin, your hunger hormone goes really, really high. It's like, get calories. You are going to die, you know? So like, it just comes over you. If anybody's used cannabis and got like munchies, it's like that times a billion, right? So it's like, it's intense. And I had this one day that I was like, nope, not doing this anymore. I'm going to go eat every single, I like the cravings were insane. Like I, stuff I don't normally eat. I wanted every bad for you food there is. I wanted pizza and breadsticks and cinnamon rolls and candy and chocolate and just anything. <laughs> That was like calorically dense and like goody goody gumdrops. It was crazy. I hadn't been in that place in a really long time and I drove to go get them. I was like, yep, that is totally going down right now. It was kind of like F this shit kind of energy, right? And I literally pulled over funny in the gym parking lot. It was just where I was at. I was like, dude, you got to start breathing. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Because I've been through this before and I sat there in that freaking parking lot. And I talked to myself out loud, which yes, I do use as a, as a mindset tool. And I highly recommend it. And I started breathing first of all, so I could get into my parasympathetic deep breaths. And I was like, what is going on with you right now? And I'm like, I'm freaking starving and I'm over this crap and I don't want to do it anymore. And I was like, okay. I was like, pretend, let's pretend that you're eating all that stuff right now. I literally like pretended that it was like sitting in my passenger seat and I'm just like eating pizza and cinnamon rolls and chocolate and candy. And it was like, how do you feel now? And I was like, horrible. Like I feel sick and like my head's all messed up. And like, now I feel like I got to go do cardio and like, Oh, that's just like so much worse. And, and I was like, okay, so what can you do instead? And I was like, freaking breathe and go take a nap. And I was like, okay, okay. So I just like, I had to like talk myself off of the ledge. And so in those moments where you're starting to sink into old patterns, maybe for you, it's like, if you get home really late at night, you eat or something like that. Pretend that it's five minutes that you ate all the things and it's five minutes later and ask yourself how you feel. I use this for life choices too. I'm like, I'm going to pretend I made that choice. How does it feel? And I'm like, Ooh, nope, 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 nope. That's not the one. And then I pretend I made the other decision. And I'm like, yep, yep, yep. That one. Right. So it's like pretending you're in the energy of you've already made that choice is so helpful. Okay. Um, I kind of messed up on this numbering. So sorry if I got off on, you know, the 10 things, but I'm sorry. I have a bunch of notes. This one is, um, the, the, I think is the last one. No such thing as try. Okay. Right. Yoda says that, but really, truly get the word trying out of your vocabulary. I'm really trying to lose weight. Uh, you either are losing weight or you aren't losing weight. This trying is a very, very weak word. I'm trying to start a business. Are, what? <laughs> you either are starting a business or you aren't starting a business. I'm trying to eat healthier. No, I'm eating healthier. I'm eating healthy, right? So switch all your trying, get that, like watch it. Be like a, you know, little police on yourself. When you see yourself, you, I do it. I sometimes I slip too and I'm like, Ooh, nope, not trying. I am doing that. Oh wow. What an energy shift. Okay. So get the word try out of your vocabulary, get into that empowered centered place within yourself that you know you have. Okay. Um, I think the last thing that I wanted to hit on with you guys is um, knowing what your barriers are. What are they? Where, what happens? Where does this break down? 
What are the belief systems that you have? Do you feel guilty? Are you a parent and you feel guilty for going to the gym? I don't at all because I'm like, there's a couple things. One, I'm modeling for them what a healthy lifestyle looks like. And two, I am a much happier mom to be around for the rest of the day. So if you're like, I can't do anything for myself for other people, that's bullshit. And like, nobody wants to be around somebody like that. Do you like being around people who like, imagine your, your best friend wanted to go do something else and they're like, oh, I can't, I have to hang out with you. How's that feel? <laughs> no, thank you. I don't want to hang out with you if you would rather be doing something else. So this energy of um, self-sacrifice, if that's one of the things that holds you back, that's kind of common. That's disgusting. You got to get rid of that energy. Nope. Happy people show up for themselves and actually gravitates people towards you because you're like a safe person. They don't have to wonder if you're like just pleasing and doing all these things for them. So, you know, know what your berries are. Emotional eating. Yeah. Okay. That's a great point. So emotional eating, there's a few things I'll say. One, watch for sleep and your basics in your life. So much of emotional eating, in my opinion, is your basics are all off. Your circadian rhythm's off. You haven't, you don't have a regular sleep schedule. You don't exercise at the same time of day. It's like all over the place. Um, you don't eat consistently like a, a normal pattern. Your body is just like, holy crap. Like, what are we doing? It's all freaking over the place. Our bodies are literally like dogs. They are like trainable. <laughs> and they, they, they like to be in a flow of knowing what to expect. So literally, if you work out at the same time every day, they will, your body will be able to more easily release those chemicals to get you up and going. That's why if you're like a 5 a.m. workout person and you try to do it at 2 p.m., not super fun, <laughs> right? But if you always work at it too, your body's like, oh, oh, okay, this is what we do. So a lot of emotional eating is like your circadian rhythm is off. Something, watch your basics, especially when stress goes up in your life. It is even more crucial, more crucial to watch your basics. When my stress is mounting and I feel like there's a million things on my plate, it is more important that I take my meditation time, do my breath work, do cold showers, work out, all those basics that keep me centered in here, do not let those go when stress mounts. My mom taught me that in marathon and running. My mom was like freaking pioneer in women's running. And she told me, she's like, when you get to that place where you're like starting to panic, mm, that's where the basics become the most important. Your breath, your form, lock it in. Don't go into this panic. Okay. Another part of emotional eating is yes, you might have to do some deep work, hire a coach, a, a mindset coach of some sort that helps you dive in and become more self-aware. I love the work of Byron Katie. Very, very helpful. You can read the work, the book, loving what is I work with a woman named Catherine Dixon who does clarity coaching. It is the work of Byron Katie that she facilitates becoming more aware of what is going on inside of us. Many of us are afraid of our emotions. And so we suppress them and we don't even, we don't even know what's going on with us. Part of my um, higher coaching morning routine is the gratitude practice. And we identify the emotions we feel when we think about those things that we're grateful for. And the purpose of that is helping us get more in touch with our emotions. So if you are emotionally eating a lot and you've, you're, all your basics are good, you need healing. You need deeper subconscious work. And you can't, it's, I don't recommend doing that on your own because you can't see your own blind spots. You need like a surgeon. You need somebody to come in that's in alignment, someone you trust and to say like, mm, have you considered this? Right? So yeah. Um, a lot of people like to check out with food or TV or whatever. Check the F in. Do not be afraid to go inside and say, okay, what is going on with me? It's disassociation. It doesn't do anything for you. It's, it's so worth diving in. That's why we do mindset. That's why the freaking logo for higher coaching is an eagle coming out of the center of the mountain. What, that, what this logo means is it's just like a symbol to me that matters because the mountains were so healing to me and I, there's a whole story with the eagle and ayahuasca and stuff. But it's like you're going up the mountain and you think you're getting to the top and you're like, yeah, I'm crushing this mountain. But then you go inside and that eagle soars higher than you ever freaking could imagine on top of a mountain. And that's, that, that's it. It's like you get going, you start doing some work, but you got to go deep inside if you really, really, really want to reach new heights in your, in your life. So 
Yeah, your divorce was finalized after two years. Yep, good time to dive inside and see what all those patterns were that you wanna work on in yourself now, right? It's beautiful. Self-awareness is beautiful. Don't be afraid. Um, the book is called Loving What Is by Byron Katie. Um, where can you learn more about disassociation? Um, I don't know, probably Google it. I don't have like a good resource for that. But yeah, anytime you're checking out, like drinking, watching TV, um, you cannot be in silence. It's literally like torture for you. You just want to talk or get distracted. That's a good clue that you have a hard time accepting what's going on in your own mind. And the only way out is through. And sometimes we need help with that. And so that's why coaches and um, really excellent therapists <laughs> are helpful. Um, okay, let's see. Um, I'll go ahead and open up to questions if anybody has any more. And then I will just kind of see what else comes through. I was really trying to tap in before I got started on this and like ask what would be helpful for people. But the biggest thing like overarching all of this is love. Love, loving yourself. Um, I have clients sometimes where we can't go through, we can't count calories and macro. We can't do that kind of stuff. They're not ready for that because they've been so mean to themselves their whole life regarding food and so restrictive and just this like mean bully that we have to change that first before we can get into anything mechanical like that. And so many times I have to take clients through this process of allowing themselves to finally freaking eat food and not beating themselves up about it. And that is our work that we do, right? And if you can, when you have, I call, I call this one, I always have like these little analogies. That's how my mind works, but I call this Black Friday syndrome. When you have perceived scarcity, and this is regard to food, look at, look at Black Friday, the stuff you see, right? It's like so freaking crazy. People are nuts. They're like losing their minds. They're like trampling people and like pushing people and stealing stuff out of their carts. And they're acting crazy because of perceived scarcity. They believe there's only so many of those TVs and I got to freaking get it. And that's what we do when we get in a really restrictive mindset around food. We act like that. It's like, finally, it's just like, oh my gosh, there's a little, and that's what leads to binging. In my opinion, a, a big part of what leads to binging is like, crap, dude, I already ate some Oreos. I might as well go freaking crazy and eat everything bad that I couldn't eat this whole time because tomorrow I'm going back to scarcity. It makes you act crazy. So if that's you, if this is resonating with you, you need to take the restrictions off the effing table. You can eat whatever you freaking want. You are a grown human. You have a card that has money and you can go get that crap whenever you want. So get rid of the restrictive mindset because it's, it's making you crazy. And remember you can eat whatever you want. And once that it, limitation is gone, you can start to act normal and be your mom. And it's like, of course I can have an entire pizza if I would like. Okay. I can't have that. Now you can come into, what do I really want? What else would be good? Let me, okay. I am going to have some pizza because that sounds really good. But let me make a big old like salad with chicken and all this stuff so I get filled up on some nutrients first and then I'll have like a piece, piece, of, piece or two of pizza, right? So that kind of mentality. Um, okay, how to allow yourself to enjoy food that isn't on the plan instead of feeling guilty. So this goes along with what I was just saying is like if you ever feel guilty after eating anything, that right there is where you need to start. Um, I'll give an example. Um, my... <laughs> I swear a lot, all the time in front of my kids and everything. And I had a friend over and Micah, my nine-year-old, well, all of a sudden I sweared and he was like, oh, you got to put a dollar in the swear jar. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he was like, yeah, you sweared. And I'm like, Micah, I, I swear all the time. And, and it made me think, and I was like, hold on a second. I'm like, I don't like that idea of a swear jar. That means that I'm making a choice that I'm not okay with. I was like, the, the difference is I'm okay. I'm making a conscious choice to use that word and I'm okay with it. And so I'm sharing that example because it's the same thing with food. It's a very like immature and self abandoning mindset to think that like, I just made this choice that was totally out of control and now I have to feel guilty about it. No, own that shit. You made the choice to eat that. And that is where a lot of the work is. It's like, no, I'm choosing this. I'm not out of control. I'm not, no, I may I admit to yourself when you start to eat whatever. Yes, I choose this. I'm choosing this. I am choosing this and I'm choosing this. And afterwards being like, 
that was delicious. It may not have gotten me on my fitness journey, but I chose to eat that and I enjoyed it and I'm good with it. So getting rid of this mentality of like um, guilt and shame, uh, I often say that those are cop-outs because when we go into guilt and shame, we don't have to process anything. We don't have to find solutions. We don't have to ask like what the heck is actually happening. We just go into guilt and shame and that's it in the story. Like I suck, I can't believe I did that. Ugh. And that's it. But if you can stop going into guilt and shame and instead give yourself a big old dose of compassion, it's all good, it's all good. Okay, what happened there? Okay, let me think. Hmm, I've noticed if I stay up past 11, I just pretty much end up eating every time. Okay, so what are you gonna do about it? I gotta start going to bed at like nine, yeah, okay? And it, maybe it's 10 one night, you're like, I'm starting to get hungry, I'm going into that same, time to go to bed, <laughs> right? Not, let me watch something on Netflix real quick. You know where that's going, right? So this is like self-awareness practice and you cannot be self-aware when you are in guilt and shame. It's a weird filter like this, that it's cloudy that you're putting over your face, blocking yourself from being able to actually find solutions and ask, objectively what happened there. I imagine like a big brother or a big sister or a kind parent where kids like, you know, maybe really mad at themselves because they didn't win their game in a sport. And instead of being like, oh, can't win them all, loser. <laughs> you know, it's just like, hey, come here, come here. Okay, so like, what do you think went well? What do you, what do you wanna work on next time? <sighs> How about that mindset for a change? Same thing with us. Okay, it's this like loving, like, it's all good. There's no need for guilt and shame, but like, let's dive into it. What's going well? Where can we use work? What do you wanna shift? Problem solving instead of guilt and shame. Yeah, Emily, so healing. It's just like, there's no need for that. It's just self abuse and it doesn't get you where you wanna go. How can you be in an empowered place when you're just sitting there pushing yourself down and down and down? The only way is to buoy yourself up, support yourself, love yourself, hold space for yourself. It's okay. Have compassion. There's a book called Self-Compassion by Kristen Neff. If you have not read that book, I don't care where you're at in your journey, you need to read that book. It is so freaking good. Um, all right. I tend to get sick when I start strength training. Any thoughts and tips? Do you mean like, like you get like a virus, like cold or elaborate for me on how you get sick from strength training? Um, all right, you talk about breath work. Where can you learn about it? Do you have resources to learn this? Yes. Okay, so there's so many, but some of my favorites, obviously, um, well, depends on what you want, but on like a daily practice like I do, um, I'm basically doing Wim Hof breath work. So Wim Hof has a couple of books. He's like the most cool human in the whole wide world. So you might wanna read his books. Um, and then the app that I am using right now during meditation is called Lixir, L-I-X-I-R. It's only available for iPhone users though, I'm sorry, but there's a million other breath work apps, but you can just even go on YouTube and just search like meditation breath work, right? And there, um, there's another app called Insight Timer and they have breath work on there too, right? So they just walk you through exactly what to do. And breath work is so important because it helps us develop our ability to manage, to, like to go from our sympathetic nervous system, which is like fight or flight, to our parasympathetic, it increases the health of the vagus nerve, which connects our brain and our gut, which is responsible for that response. And so, yeah, like breathing, even for emotional eaters, like go into breath, you're probably in like fight or flight mode and you want something to bring you down and comfort you. And so like breath can be a really important part of getting past that. Um, let's say you get home from, you're just any time of day, you get home from work or something, you're really emotionally overwhelmed. I do it all the time when I can feel myself feeling anxious. Like I don't feel really anxious right now because I'm just pretty comfortable talking to you guys on social media because I've been doing this for a long time. But sometimes on podcasts, I still feel, I can feel myself being a little anxious because I'm like, there's this like, I need to know like what to ask next or like, you know, and so I just, I can feel it. I can feel it in my body. And that's another thing is being really aware of like how your body feels when you're in different emotional states. And for me, I know I, I can, I know what anxiety feels like and I'm like, right? Just breathing big into my belly, coming in and out. And that really helps bring you down. Um, okay. Wendy, giving yourself permission and own it. Yes. Yes, exactly. Give yourself permission to do whatever you want. And then you can make choices that are mature. Okay. When we have these 
self-imposed or society-imposed restrictions of I can't do that. We make weird choices. We're like the little deviant kid that's like, yes, I can. Watch me. It's crazy what happens when you take restrictions away. This is like porn addiction, the same thing. It's something that's impacted my life, so it's something I've thought a lot about. Porn addiction, like when there's like this like crazy, like you can't do that. It's forbidden. It's bad. Guess what it makes guys want to, or women too, want to do more. Watch it because it's this forbidden fruit, right? Give yourself permission. You can watch it all you want. Now you can make a logical choice. It's like, well, I don't really like how I feel when I watch that, so I'm not going. <laughs> Give yourself permission to eat every donut that's in your entire city right now. Yes, I can go get every donut there is, thousands of donuts, and I'm just going to eat them until I get sick and just like, yes, nah, I'm good. <laughs> right? And if you really want it, freaking own it. I choose that, right? We need to get rid of the restrictive mindset around food. It is restrictive mindsets in general cause us to act crazy. Get rid of it. Drop it. Even if you're doing like my level up or any sort of program that you're doing, you are in charge. You are behind the driver's seat, right? Like it's crazy to me sometimes really, can I have like 10 grams extra protein? I'm like, I'm going to let you answer that. <laughs> I'm going to let you answer that. Can you have 10 grams extra protein? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. You can also go eat McDonald's. You can also do that. You know what I mean? It's just this, we get in this disempowered mindset and it causes us to just feel small. Get rid of that. You are owning this. Make it yours. This is your life. Take it by the horns and create it the way you want and be on a self-discovery journey. Okay. I don't like, I hate the guru mentality. I will never do that to you guys. Ever. I hate it. It's like, oh, you're stupid and don't know anything and this is how you should do it. Blah. No. My job is to educate you, give you ideas, listen to feedback. I learn from you guys. I learn from my clients. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Okay. All right. Let's try it like that. Right? It's don't, you cannot go on a self-empowerment journey in a place of smallness. You have to like reconnect here, get centered. And it's like, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to take ideas from people who are experts in their fields, of course. Right? but I'm still gonna own this and make it mine, <laughs> right? So, okay, that's pretty much it. Um, I, if you guys want to join me in my, I'm not trying to like, I, I guess I am trying to, I'm not trying to sell myself, but I'm just trying to remind you, I do have a level up um, challenge coming on January 17th. So if you wanna join us for that, level up is like, it's a year long thing, but the first month is for the challenge. This is like, to me, if you're into mindset and, and physical transformation, like you want to go deep and you want to like change your life. This is the best thing that I could do for like a self-guided program that I could possibly think of. So the mindset, it starts, it's let's grow baby is the acronym acronym because I say that all the time. So the first month is like getting real quiet and listen, meditating, going inside, becoming aware of what's happening in here. Um, training, we're going through a whole process. We got to work on flexibility, stability, mobility, but we're doing it within your weights workouts. It's not like I'm like having you just stretch and stuff. Okay. And it's cool. Uh, you'll see if you guys do the first month, like you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm pretty freaking proud of it. Um, and then on, uh, and there's an advanced option and like a newer person option on the training. And then nutrition is higher protein, moderate fat and carbs. In case anybody's wondering, um, you can follow the meal plan in there. You can make it your own. So if anybody wants to join me for that, I'm actually guiding through a challenge on January 17th for four weeks. It ends right before Valentine's day. So you can have your freaking chocolate cake or whatever. <laughs> I don't believe in living this like almost orthorexic. I can't ever eat anything that isn't like, you know, organic <laughs> green beans from my backyard or whatever, you know, like it's okay sometimes. Um, <laughs> my shoulders are goals and you're a dude. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you won't regret doing India Terrace program. She lives and breathes by example. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Wendy's one of my clients. I and hire. I love helping. I love in anything I can do. I'm very like it's it's an honor to be able to have learned what it takes to change your life. Um, not even just from a physical perspective, but also from like how I relate to myself and how I see myself and what I know I'm capable of from like being a mom to business to everything. Um, I'm so grateful for the journey that I've been on. It's like, it's been like a magical carpet ride. So it brings me a lot of joy to be able to share that. 
with you guys. Thank you, Emily, one of my clients. So I appreciate you guys being here. All right, that is it. Thank you all for joining me. And um, if you do want to join the Level Up Challenge, the link is just all over my website through the link in the bio here on Hire and on my Coach Sarah Garrison page. Hey, Mel, joining from over in Australia early morning. Sorry I miss you. This is right at the end, but you can watch it. We'll post it, the replay. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Hope you guys have a very happy new year. And watch, like, the, I just want to close this with, mm, like, love for self. Owning it, like, mm, center yourselves. Center yourselves, like, own your freaking power. Your powerful, divine, capable, intelligent beings. Own it. Do not play small. Do not think other people are better than you. Or oh, Don't beat yourselves down in the pursuit of growth. Own your freaking power, okay? That is what I will close this with. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay, have a great day. <laughs> okay, bye.